sign-up sheet. Anyone who's not on the sheet who would still like to uh, comment will be given a chance. First up is City Clerk Pam Powers. absentee ballot we have those available now we offer both in office or mail ballot service even people who live overseas can request an absentee ballot uniformed overseas citizen uh, absentee voting act also known as UACABA allows electronic exchange of the ballot to and from the city clerk's office um, for all of the federal ballots that, uh, that we may have during an election. The process is somewhat different, however, for municipal ballots. Uh, the law, state law does not allow for an electro electronic exchange of a municipal ballot. So we are only allowed to mail the ballot out to someone who requests one. But voters can submit electronically what's known as a federal write-in absentee ballot to cast their vote electronically for the special municipal election. If anyone wants more information about that, they should contact the city clerk's office. Early voting is planned for February 24th through February 28th during normal um, office hours. We're open 8.30 to 4.30 for uh, casting your ballot with no excuse. Um, you don't need to have those typical three reasons why you can't go to the poll, to polls on election day uh, in order to vote early. Um, and if we add evening hours, I'm talking with the mayor about that now, um, we'll be posting that on the city's website as well. well I'm hoping to add at least one or two days um, during that week of February to the 28th. The annual street list was sent out last week and we ask that people return it to us in a timely fashion so that we can be sure to update their census year. That's an important element when you go to the polls and, and we let you know that you're an inactive voter. It's probably likely because we haven't heard from you in any way, shape or form about voting and uh, returning your street list is one way to stay as on our rolls as an active voter. And lastly, Dog licenses are now available, and I would encourage everyone to mail in their request so that we can get uh, a dog license back to you. Um, that information about dog licensing is on the bottom of your street list form. The fee is $10 for a spayed or neutered pet, $20 otherwise, and the fee is waived for residents over 70 years old. Thank you for your time. Thank you for those announcements. <clears throat> Next up, is Stephen Callahan. Hi, my name is Stephen Callahan, 24 Bridgeford Road, and I spoke to you last month, earlier, no, it was in January, last month, about the frustration I had in trying to get contracts of city's business from the clerk's office. And I said that I didn't think, you know, it was appropriate. I was going to check to see whether it was legal. So I did find out that the Massachusetts General Law 41-17 requires that every contract that's exercised in the city be placed within the city clerk's office and recorded within one week. 
and that all contracts must be maintained in the city clerk's office and so that the public can go in and get a look at them. This apparently changed, at least according to a letter I have from the city clerk, about 39 months ago. 39 months ago, they stopped providing city contracts. This law was specifically developed for transparency so that anyone could see what was going on in the business. The fact that we have not had a law consistent with transparency in the past 39 months really worries me. I also just want to say that it deals with Burt's Bog, and it's something that's been going on. So the very first contract that I think fell behind that day was scheduled to be signed in October. That October date was scratched out in the body of the contract, it was signed in November, which just happens to coincide when the last record went down of contracts to the city council. There's one more contract out of Bird's Block. It's scheduled to be signed, which they're selling four lots with an assessed value of around $36,000. These are the lots that the mayor said were going to be sold at market value to help support them. And those four lots being sold for $110,000 a $250,000 discount. And in the bids, they also directed that $45,000 of the city profit be sent to the, a third party. And I think that this is some of the reasons why these contracts are not available, although I did get a copy of the last one. I had hoped that it would be able to be on the council's agenda so it could be discussed and people have a chance to answer why this change occurred, who authorized it. It's no longer a question about whether it's legal. It's been a violation of the law for the past 39 months. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, James Lowenthal. Good evening. I'm James Lowenthal. I live at 181 Crescent Street here in Northampton. Those of you who uh, read the New York Times, you would have seen on the front page just a couple of days ago a picture of fireflies, everybody's favorite insect. They're in steep decline worldwide. The second major reason after habitat destruction is light pollution. Light pollution negatively affects every animal that's ever been studied. Experts agree light pollution is bad for wildlife. It's also bad for humans. We have experts right here at Smith College who study circadian rhythms. There's a world expert from Germany visiting all year, giving a series of talks, including one next week, on the profound ways in which humans are tied to the daily uh, uh, light and dark cycle of a 24-hour revolving Earth. And, and how important uh, light is to regulating that. Experts agree light pollution is bad for human health. Light pollution is getting worse and worse at a rate that is astonishingly fast, as much as 5 or even 10% per year increase right here in Massachusetts. What's the population growth? Zero. But light pollution continues to grow and grow. So what do we do about it? Well, we actually have a statewide bill working its way through the legislative process right now. Every state in New England has passed uh, legislation or regulation about light pollution, except Massachusetts. This bill will bring Massachusetts in line uh, with the rest of uh, uh, other uh, forward-thinking states in New England. And it's common sense. This bill uh, will uh, uh, dictate that uh, all state and municipally funded projects have to abide by certain common sense rules, such as a light shouldn't be too blue, because blue light's worse for your health and worse for the environment. And uh, it, it, uh, it shouldn't go off into the sky and, and, and side us. It should go down <coughs> and it's useful. These are uh, normal, commonly accepted, uh, common sense ideas. There's a misconception that this bill will require cities and towns to spend more money. That is not true. If the city's going to put in lights, it, it has to choose between good lights and bad light. That's all. It doesn't cost any more money to choose good lights. If the city's made a mistake, it doesn't have to correct it through this bill. There's, there's no extra. Uh, uh, money required by municipalities as a result of this bill. I'm here to ask tonight that the city of Northampton will support this bill. We just passed a major hurdle yesterday. The bill was reported favorably out of the, uh, the Joint Committee on Telecommunica Telecommunications, uh, Utilities, and Energy. This was a huge victory. It's now in ways and means. And I'm hoping that the city of Northampton will say, yeah, we think this bill is a good idea, and we support it. Uh, and I will follow up with my uh, city councilor, Karen Foster. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's everyone who's on the sheet. But if, if anyone else is free to uh, make.
speak now if they'd like to. Nope. Okay, hearing no other public comment, we are going to start the meeting. <coughs> um, Laura, will you call the roll? Council White. Here. Council Foster. Here. Council Jarrett. Here. Council Labarge. Present. Councilor Mayori. Here. Councilor Nash. Here. Councilor Quinlan. Here. Councilor Here. 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 Okay. Um, we do not have any public hearings today. I do not have any updates to committee chairs. Have any updates? Seeing none. We'll go into recognitions and one minute announcements. Um, I'll just start and say I think it's appropriate to recognize that uh, Fire Chief Nichols has announced this week that he is retiring after 32 years of service to Northampton, his entire career um, serving Northampton, and um, and he also comes from a family of, of um, people who have served in, in public safety in Northampton. So um, we wish him a very happy, well-deserved retirement and thank him for his service and his leadership, um, I would say particularly in helping to shape um, the department into what now is fire rescue. So congratulations, Chief Nichols, we will miss you. Any other announcements? Councilor Mayori? Um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that um, Florence Night Out is happening again this year. I believe it's the second year. I'm, um, this is a fantastic community event. My kids love this. They, that's when they close all the roads down in Florence mm -hmm. Center. And it was such a thrill for them to be, you know, even just hanging out in the middle of the road with Art Chalk and their friends was fantastic. So um, it's not too early to get involved. Um, there's, you be, can, can be an underwriter, you can sponsor um, art spaces. If you're a local business, you can participate. Uh, we're looking for more food. And so if you have any questions or would like to get involved, um, you can email Florence Night Out, that's one word, Florence Night Out at gmail.com. And the event is June 6, 2020. Excellent. Thank you. Mr. Quinlan. Uh, I'd just like to invite everyone to join me Tuesday, February 25th at 6 p.m. at Edwards Church for an event about the past, present, and future of public education. Uh, it's a conversation on public education when the world's on fire, a commemoration of the work of Jackson Street retiring principal Gwen Agna and hosted by Vijay Prashad, both Ward 1 residents, by the way. Uh, so I hope you can join me. Other announcements? No. Your Honor, do you have any communications for us? Um, I just wanted to um, update folks on the status of the uh, town hall meetings I've been holding around the community. I want to thank all the community members who've come out um, over the course of the last several weeks for the six, uh, six that I've held so far. Um, and there are two more that are scheduled right now. Uh, Wednesday, next Wednesday, uh, February 12th at 7 p.m. at Ryan Road School in Ward 6. Um, and then on Monday, uh, the 24th um, uh, of February uh, in Ward 7 at Leeds Elementary School. So we've got two more opportunities to come. Um, there's all the information that's presented at those town hall meetings are on the city's website, um, along with all the other um, information like the calculator, um, news stories, and, um, and other links to um, important information about the election. <laughs> I also wanted to announce um, that um, next Wednesday uh, at 10.30 in the morning um, at the Senior Center, uh, we're going to be holding a special workshop. Um, Northampton Assessor Joan uh, Serafin will be holding a workshop to talk about um, some of the many property tax relief programs uh, that we offer for Northampton seniors and veterans. Um, as the council may recall, uh, back in December when we brought forward the order uh, to put forward the question uh, on the March 3rd, 2020 ballot for a proposition two and a half override, uh, we also brought forward um, several um, expansions of the existing uh, tax programs for seniors. Um, this is an opportunity for both seniors and veterans uh, to come to the Senior Center to hear uh, from uh, Joe Serafin. Um, and, um, and learn about the various programs and what their potential eligibility may be. So again, that's uh, next Wednesday morning, February 12th, 10.30 a.m. at the Northampton Senior Center. So I just want to get that word out as well. And those are my announcements. Yes. To follow up with that, will that be um, videoed by Northampton Open Media for um, people who can't be there? That's a good question. We're, we'll look into that. Okay. Yeah, we'll look into that. We have a camera there for council.
council on aging meeting so we can uh, we can uh, look at doing that. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so Thank much. You. Any other questions? Okay. <clears throat> so next up we have the warrants that we heard about at public comment for the March 3rd elections. Uh, first up is 20.106, a warrant to establish the date, time, and location of the upcoming election for the presidential primary. In the City Council, February 6, 2020, upon the recommendation of City Clerk Pamela L. Powers, ordered that meetings of the members of the Democratic, Republican, Green Rainbow, and Libertarian Party in the City of Northampton qualified to vote will be held on Tuesday, March 3, 2020, in the several polling places, places designated for the purpose by the City Council as follows. I'm going to read all the polling places. For the next warrant, I'm not going to read them again, if that's okay. So these polling locations are for both of these elections and warrants, okay? Ward 1, Precinct A in Jackson Street School Auditorium. Ward 1, Precinct B in Jackson Street School Auditorium. Ward 2, Precinct A in Smith Vocational Agricultural High School. Ward 2, Precinct B in Smith Vocational Agricultural High School. Ward 3, Precinct A in the Senior Center Great Room, 67 Conn Street. Ward 3, Precinct B in the Senior Center Great Room. Ward 4, Precinct A in the Senior Center Great Room. Ward 4, Precinct B in the Senior Center Great Room. Ward 5, Precinct A in the Florence Civic and Business Building at 90 Park Street. Ward 5, Precinct B in Smith Vocational Agricultural High School. Ward 6, Precinct A in Robert K. Finn Ryan Road School. Ward 6, Precinct B in Robert K. Finn Ryan Road School. Ward 7, Precinct A in John F. Kennedy Middle School Community Room. Ward 7, Precinct B in Leeds School Gymnasium Lower Level. The polls, will, the polls will be opened at 7 o'clock in the forenoon and closed at 8 o'clock in the evening of the said day. And all members will, will, in the wards in which they are entitled to vote between said hours, give in their votes for to the primary officers for the election of candidates of political parties for the following offices. Presidential prefer, preference, one state committee man for each political party for the Hampshire, Hampshire Franklin Worcester District, one state committee woman for each political party for the Hampshire, Franklin, and Worcester district, 35 members of the Democratic Ward Committee, 35 members of the Republican Ward Committee, 10 members of the Green Rainbow <coughs> Ward Committee, and 10 members of the Libertarian Party Ward Committee. <coughs> so we'll do, we're going to do these individually, both ones. So, so I, move, I move acceptance second. of the warrant. That was made, and who seconded that? Councilor Nash seconded. Any? Uh, yes. Uh, Pam, could you step up? Because I, I just uh, it's a simple question, but um, I had someone who had commented on social media that they're concerned that they were obliged to um, provide a stamp to return the city census, and were concerned that that was some that might serve as an impediment for some people to. Um, uh, remain on the on the uh, voter rolls. E is it possible to also return the city census to the clerk's office without uh, without the expense of of a stamp or a stamp book? Actually, more likely, I don't think anyone t they they sell individual stamps, but I think I think you're asking, and I'm assuming that this individual also doesn't want to come to the city clerk's office because that specified on the street listing itself, postage free if you bring it to the city clerk's office. But, so what I'm assuming that they're asking for is can they return it electronically? I do get them now, so yes. Oh, can. You can, it can be returned electronically as well. So a, a simple scan of a PDF yeah. would be sent to you. They just need to contain a signature. So those without signatures have to be returned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other discussion on this warrant? Hearing none, uh, let's do a roll call, please. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Sierrett. Yes. Councillor LaBarge. Yes. Councillor Mayor. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And yes. The roll. Yeah, so this has, there's been a request for two readings on this. Um, so the motion's been made to suspend. Second that. It's been uh, seconded. Any discussion on suspending our rule for um, two separate readings? Hearing none, roll call, please. Um, Councillor Foster? Yes. Councillor Jarrett? Yes. 
Councillor LaBarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. And Councillor Dwight. Uh, yes. Okay, so that passes into readings. Um, next is 20 point. I think you just called the rule for suspending the rule. Okay, so we did a roll call for second. suspending <laughs> that rule. Um, motion on second reading. Uh, so moved. Second. Second. Um, we're going to do a voice vote on this. Uh, all those in favor of the second reading on this warrant, please say aye. 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 Objections. Abstentions. Passes in second reading. Okay. Next up, 20.17. <coughs> warrant for the, uh, this is for the March 3rd, 2020 special municipal election. Um, a warrant to establish date, time, and location of a special municipal election in the City Council February 6, 2020, upon the recommendation of City Clerk Pamela L. Powers, ordered that a special municipal election will be held in the City of Northampton on Tuesday, March 3rd, 2020, in several polling locations designated for the purpose by the City Council as follows and read previously. Um, the polls will be opened at 7 o'clock in the forenoon and closed at 8 o'clock in the evening of the said day, and all such voters in the several wards and precincts in which they are individually entitled to vote between said hours give in their votes yes or no on the following question. Shall the City of Northampton be allowed to assess an additional $2,500,000 in real estate and personal property taxes for the purposes of funding the operating budgets of the city and public schools for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2020. Motion approved. Motion's been made. Second. And seconded. Uh, any discussion on this warrant? Hearing none. Councilor Jarrett. Yes. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councillor Mayori? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor Quinlan? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. Councillor Thorpe? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. And Councillor Foster? Suspend yes. Suspend the rule. Motion made to suspend the rule. Second. Second. And seconded by Councillor Foster. Um, any discussion on suspending the rule? All those in favor of suspending the rule, please say aye. 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 Objections? Substantions? So the rules are suspended. Is there a motion for a second so reading? Second. Made by Councillor Deutz, seconded by Councillor Labarge. And we will do a, any discussion? No. We'll do a roll call, please, on the second reading. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. And Councillor Jarrett. Yes. That passes in. <laughs> two readings. <coughs> Next up, we have a referral of the Charter Review Committee recommendations. Um, so this is, we're just going to, dis we can discuss the referral. We're not going to discuss the recommendations themselves. And if you'll allow me, I want to give a little bit sort of of a path forward and, and sort of lay out what the process is from here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So I'm requesting a public hearing um, to be held to give the public another opportunity to weigh in on this. They had opportunities um, with the Charter Review Committee, but I think it's appropriate for them to have an opportunity with the City Council. So um, the now former chair and former vice chair, because once they submitted the report, um, the, the committee was um, dissolved have said that they would be happy to come and give another presentation. I think that would be lovely and make sense since more than half the council is new. Um, so they have agreed that they would do that. And my hope is that the presentation will be part of the pub a public hearing that will happen at Legislative Matters. Um, and then once Legislative Matters has closed that hearing, then they will vote, they will give their recommendation on the recommendations. Um, and it will come back to council and um, we will have a full deliberation of it and then we will vote and what we're voting on is to authorize the mayor to um, to request the state legislature for a special act to amend the charter so that's that's the process from this point forward um, but right now what we're doing is we're referring this to can I speak to that? Sure. Um, in legislative matters, we will discuss 
um, among the committee the uh, a, an appropriate time to have a special meeting, hopefully uh, devoted to this discussion and the hearing, as opposed to embed the next one's pretty the next legislative matters meeting is going to be preloaded agenda. So we to try and cram into that would be wouldn't be right. It's also worth I I think it's appropriate to note cram into that would be wouldn't be right. It's also worth I I think it's appropriate to note that all the new counselors all of them showed up for more charter review discussions than say current counselors for the most part so so they all get props anyway it's i mean we'll be preaching to the choir but i think it's appropriate for the public to have one more opportunity to hear and participate in the conversation so what's the date on that well, we, that's where we're, we're going to try and decide, we're going to pick the date in legislative matters when we're assembled as a body and try to find out which one will work best for the committee and for the public. So, is there a motion on the referral? I uh, so. And I'll second it. And this is a motion to refer to legislative, legislative matters. matters. We're all on the same page. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion on the referral? Councilor Jarrett. Um, so will we have an opportunity to make a motion to refer to other committees if we wish? Could you ex do that now? This would be or that would be That would be in, in that. Um, well, <clears throat> I'm not sure. I just wanted to have a discussion because as I was looking through the um, charter, I was thinking about, OK, um, the 16 year 16 year old voting non-citizen voting um how would this affect the civic engagement of the community and so i thought oh, is it related is community resources a possible place is the human rights commission um something that would be thinking about that um so i know city services committee is also considering ways to engage the filling of vacancies on boards and so I, the the <coughs> Um, so this is kind of my brainstorm in terms of is there uh, there are other inputs here that would be useful <clears throat> um, and then the there are things that are election related so is the board of registrars interested um, and the other things where the, the CPC the school committee the Forbes trustees and the Oliver Smith will there's a change to the filling of vacancies um, so I just wanted to kind of throw out all the different multi-member bodies and committees that I thought could have some relationship or um, input on it. And then I'm not, I'm not s suggesting that we refer to all of those, but thought it would be useful to have a discussion about that. Councilor Dwight, since you sat on the committee, um, and In fact, actually, uh, invitations were extended to all standing committees that felt that they had um, thoughts and notions about the processes, including, in fact, Clerk Powers presented a couple of times uh, before the review committee relevant, you know, in, I don't know if she was speaking for all the registrars, but the fact that uh, the city services had an opportunity, all the counselors, all the other committees were invited, um, some came with, and um, mostly focused on some of the issues that you just described, although, uh, vacancies, issues, and appointments didn't come under the aegis of the charter, so it wasn't I, that that really didn't come up in the course of the conversation. But um, I mean, I, I personally have no problem with doing another invite, um, but a lot of that heavy lifting is uh, just to let you know, and you actually probably do know on some level because, as I said, you were there for quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. That that. Um, a lot of that work has already been done over the course of the last year as the Charter of Review Committee did its, uh, did its due diligence. So. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It's worth considering. So, so I, I appreciate Councillor Jarrett's question. And I actually was thinking the same thing in terms of you know what committees to refer things to. Uh, but I also think that the Charter Review Committee did extensive outreach. They. They, um, how many meetings did you guys have? At least 12. At think. least 12, and you moved the locations around to accommodate and we, people. I, and that, um, that I, I, I think that um, we don't want to, I think at this point that, that all of the homework has really been done. And that I, I think that um, 
that it would be proper to send it to legislative matters um, and you know and it would be an, another bite at the apple for people to to weigh in before it goes to council where they'll have another chance to you know weigh in and so I think um, I mean usually when in my mind when we need to send things to committee it has to do with 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 actually doing proper outreach but we've had 12 public meetings already and that um, and we're planning another one coming down the pike and um, so I, I think I think we're safe but it's it's I, I agree with it's a really good question to ask and I, I appreciate that Yes, um, I want to echo what Councillor Nash has talked about. Um, the Charter Committee worked very, very tirelessly. Meetings after meetings, open to the public. I even went and spoke on an issue that I had concerns about. Um, I was on the Charter Committee once before, too. I think, Bill, you were with us, weren't you? Um, no, on the, on the first Charter? I was on the first Charter. And it's a, it's a huge process. And I think this charter committee really stretched out and did a tremendous amount of outreach. I really feel that we should refer this to legislative matters. And then I agree with Councilor Nash that then comes to city council. And then we, we talk again. And plus, if people want to come in during open public session, they have the opportunity to do that. But thank you. Mm -hmm. Just to add to it, actually, it's, it's appropriate for all those representative bodies to participate in the conversation if they feel so inclined mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the public hearing. Mm -hmm. And actually, Councilor Nash made a point that I completely space as well. Of course, we'll have two meetings in which, two public meetings here where we'll be discussing it as well. So. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things, and actually, I've, I'm just getting a correction now. We had 19 meetings, <laughs> um, so it's a little more than 12. Um, so, uh, um, the in part of our frustration, actually, in the course of it, was uh, uh, sometimes not very well participated. Not 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 a lot of people had shown up, and I, I and I certainly understood that on some level, but. Whatever participation we can get, and in fact, actually, the 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 most, and I think you were, you were at the the meeting that we did at Jackson Street School, that was the best attended with the most amount of energy. Mm -hmm. That that was really exciting, and that was the eleventh hour meeting. That was mm -hmm. the last yeah. meeting of the uh, the last large public meeting we had. If we get that again, I'll be psyched. And anything, and anything that comes out of the course of that conversation, the, there's no. Um, clock ticking necessarily so there's not that although there is some I, I have a number of 16 year olds who have expressed a certain urgency that we do this long before the 21 yeah, but um, but the fact is that that to be honest I think this had more public vetting and participation than when we did the original uh, uh, exhaustive charter change but I'm not adverse to any, any, any more input that we can garner and any more people that we can reach out to and anyone who's willing to participate. I'd be really excited with that. Mm -hmm. so. And whatever mechanism we use. Yeah, so um, I love, I like the, I feel comfortable with that. I feel like I'm, that, that works to just refer it to legislative matters and I like the idea of the uh, inviting committees or representatives from the committees to um, the public hearing so would the I guess that would just be if individual counselors wanted to reach out to those committees that would be the way to go next we could do that the council president could actually do that as well yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I just want Sorry, to say that oh, the spirit of Councilor Jarrett's proposal to include as many voices um, I really respect and yet I think what is exciting to me about the proposed charter changes is the idea that they'll actually really expand, um, if adopted, opportunities for participation. And I know um, I, went to a number, I went to several of the meetings and how many opportunities there were for public input. So I definitely feel comfortable that the process was broad and inclusive. And because 
many of the recommendations are making municipal government even broader and more inclusive. I also feel comfortable with going to legislative matters, doing the public hearing, and sort of moving the process along, um, specifically for the reason that it has the potential to bring even more voices in. Um, I'll just note that that was precisely why I wanted there to be a public hearing. There's no requirement mm -hmm. for a hearing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I specifically wanted to have a hearing so that the council could weigh in and any sort of combination of our subcommittees and we would have sort of another opportunity um, within the council to bring the public in and have a fuller discussion. So, okay. No further comment on this. Then um, all those in favor of referring the recommendations to legislative matters, please say aye. 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 No objections? Abstentions. Okay, they are referred. Uh, next, we have the consent agenda. Um, reminder, we don't discuss items on the agenda unless we've uh, re requested to remove them and then we take them individually after we vote on the consent agenda. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to read it. Uh, first up, minutes of January 7th, 2020 organizational meeting and January 16th, 2020 meeting, um, 19.191 appointments to the Board of Registrars. Uh, this appointment received a positive recommendation from City Services on February 3rd, and that is for Catherine Kay at 136 South Main Street in Florence, term of April 2019 to March 2022 to fill a vacancy. Then 20.103, um, these are other appointments. They also all received positive recommendations from City Services. First, to the Board of Assessors, David Murphy of 78 North Elm Street. Um, that term is from January 2020 to June 2023. This is to fill a newly created seat. Um, I'll just note I, has, I was asked a question about this. So this was a newly created citizen seat. The board previously had three members, but one was the principal assessor. And uh, when um, the administrative order that was passed on uh, December 5th, 2019, in that administrative order, it called for the assessor to no longer serve on the board as the third member, and that the assessor would be replaced by another citizen member. Um, so that is what this appointment is for. This sort of, it's a newly created seat, but there had been three seats. Just, this is a newly created citizen seat. Um, and then to the planning board, Melissa Fowler, 87 Chesterfield Road in Leeds. January, the term is January 2020 to June 2021 to fill the unexpired term of Mark Sullivan. Then these are appointments that have yet to be referred uh, to City Services, to the Council of Aging, Oria Agi E. Dominic, 81 Con Street, apartment 603, term of February 2020 to June 2023 to fill a vacancy. And uh, 20 2023, the appointment of Assistant Chief John Davin as Fire Chief for, um, and that's also to be referred to City Services. Um, any removals? Move up. I will actually note, I'd like to remove the minutes okay. of 116, <coughs> please. Um, just, just those minutes? Just those minutes. So I move the consent agenda, including the minutes of January 7, 2020, but minus the minutes for January 16, 2020. Second. Seconded by Councilor Nash. Okay, no discussion. So all those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Objections? Abstentions. Okay, so moving to the, the minutes. Um, I just want to make a quick amendment because um, they incorrectly it says that the disability commission position is a liaison position. It is not. So I would like to amend that to remove the word liaison. Uh, so moved. Any discussion on that amendment? All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Any further discussion on these minutes? We'll approval of the minutes, please. Second. Second. Seconded by Councilor Quinlan. All those in favor of approving these minutes, please say aye. 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 Objections, abstentions. They have been approved. Okay. 
So it's a full seat, is that the idea? Is that the I'm not sure if I understood your question, but oh. I'm going to say sure. Also, you said it wasn't a liaison. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. I should have clarified. Yes, okay. correct. Okay. And I should have asked before you voted, but I, I thought, <laughs> thought, I was, thought I had a good understanding. We are now going to recess for finance. Laura, will you please call the roll? Councillor Shara. Here. Councillor Labarge. Present. Councillor Quinlan. Here. Here. Okay, first up, approval of the minutes from our previous meeting. So on the agenda, it shows uh, the January 14th organizational meeting and the January 16th um, meeting. Does everyone, did everyone on finance, were they able to see both of those oh, minutes? I, I apologize, the 14th are not there. Okay, yeah, the 14th so, are not there, yeah. so we're just going to approve January 16th, please. Is that, was that a motion? Yes. It's a motion Second. seconded by Council Clinton. All those in favor of any discussion? All those in favor of approving those minutes, please say aye. 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 Okay, they are approved. So, first up, financial orders. Sorry, I'm just catching up with myself. Um, 20 point. 018 order to appropriate $25,000 in Whiting Street trust funds. Uh, whereas Mr. Whiting Street, a successful Northampton businessman, left $25,000 to the city of Northampton in his will of 1875 with instructions that the money be used for, quote, the relief and comfort of the worthy poor, end quote. Whereas the Whiting Street Fund Committee, which was created by administrative order, issued its third annual grant application seeking proposals from local organizations with the goal of helping low-income persons in our community and with a specific focus on helping resolve food insecurity issues in the community. Whereas the Whiting Street Fund Committee received and reviewed the applications and has made its recommendations to the mayor, ordered that $25,000 be appropriated from the interest in the Whiting Street Fund Trust Fund to the following organizations. $10,000 to Abundance Farm to support their Pick Your Own initiative in which food insecure residents can actively participate in the life of the farm by harvesting free, organically grown fruits and vegetables. This program is conducted in collaboration with the Northampton Survival Center and continued funding will support staff needed for the larger programming and ongoing outreach to include planting workshops, cooking demonstrations, and printed educational information in multiple languages. Abundance Farm is located on the site of the Northampton Alms House, an adjoining poor farm, which from 1800 to 1950 served as a critical refuge for Northampton residents in need of shelter, food, and other services. And then $5,000 to the Northampton Survival Center to support their Fresh First program, which provides an incentive for clients to come to the center every week for fresh vegetables, fruits, and bread. The Fresh, Fruit, fr the fresh First program focuses on improving access to fresh produce, collaborating with local farmers, and providing healthy recipes to use local produce. The Northampton Survival Center is in its 41st year of operation as an emergency food pantry. Next $5,000 to Grow Food Northampton Inc. to support their incentive-based food access initiatives to provide more affordable, locally grown, healthy food for low-income residents. The funding will help support SNAP, SHARE, Tuesday Market SNAP matching, and the Neighborhood Markets program bringing affordable farm stand foods to various locations including the Senior Center, three housing communities, and, the, and three elementary schools. $5,000 to Salvation Army's Northampton Service Unit to support emergency-based food needs. The local unit provides food vouchers for local grocery stores, food bags, and disaster support in conjunction with other local service agencies. They provide, quote, last resort and quote, resources for those who may not qualify for other types of assistance. The Salvation Army has worked in Northampton for over 60 years and has been in existence since 1865, meeting basic human needs. <coughs> Is there a motion? Make a motion. Second. Motion's been made and well, I can't second it. No. I'm sorry. Is there someone on fire who will second the motion? Second. Oh, right. second. Okay. Just the one me. <laughs> <laughs> this time. Motion's been made and seconded. Mr. Mayor. Um, I, think the, uh, I think the order is pretty self-explanatory. Um, for counselors who weren't around you know, three years ago, So we decided to sort of revamp it, working with that committee. Um, so we essentially set it up as sort of a grant program um, uh, to work 
work with local agencies that do serve the poor. Mm -hmm. um, and so every year, the um, treasurer makes a recommendation about how much interest has accrued that can be used because the principal can't be touched. Um, and then we ask the uh, White East Street Committee uh, to basically conduct an RFP process. They evaluate the grants. Um, and then they make recommendations, which ultimately require appropriation from the city council. Um, these are the recommendations this year. Um, I will note, because uh, someone may be concerned about the absence of uh, MANA, um, they actually did not apply this year. So um, uh, they, they, um, they have been part of this the last few years. So, um, so this is the complete set of recommendations. And obviously, I uh, thank the Whiting Street Fund Committee for their work in, um, in helping us make sure that uh, Mr. Street's funds um, actually do get out to serve um, those most in need in our community. Thank you. Any yes. uh, Mayor, I got called Susan to make a controversy about the Lighting Street Fund, and I want to thank you again because I think by changing the way we did it before, this is excellent. You know, we are looking at our families here in the city, of giving them proper food to eat and everything. It's just wonderful. But I had asked Susan today. In regards to a $25,000 way back in the 1800s, <coughs> it's never been mentioned about how much money do we all actually have in the Whiting Fund, and she said about 300000 That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and um, again, this, he gave a gift of principle to several communities up and down yeah. uh, the Pioneer Valley. Um, where does he exempt in one community? I forget which one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't like it. Uh, I think actually some young kids threw rocks at his buggy or something. <laughs> so he left that. <laughs> that's, 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 that's right. So, um, but yes, it's, uh, they were not <laughs> again. <laughs> uh, but the challenge we had before was often people would come to us and we had this committee of volunteers who were trying. We had individuals who came to us with individual yeah. cases. Mm -hmm. It was very hard for a public body to yeah. confidentially evaluate and mm -hmm. try to understand know folks and so it was just it was a really challenging process so we work we have so many of these great nonprofits who that's their job is to work with you know low-income folks so um, we just think this is a much better model and you know they've been using food security um, as as sort of the, the theme for the last several years but obviously they may they have the option to choose other themes as well uh, but that's one that they, they've seen such a great response from um, so again, I commend the committee, and obviously one of your colleagues is a former member of the committee, so. Can I speak on that a little bit? Uh, working on the Whiting Street Fund Committee the last two and a half years was uh, very rewarding uh, work. It's um, wonderful to spend someone else's money. Um, but. Uh, you know, and, and, and specifically on food insecurity issues, uh, we did discuss whether it should be fuel or housing or something like that. And every year, it just came back to food as being the most, the most basic uh, and essential need. Um, so we, we settled on that each of the last three years. So this year, I was part of the committee when we decided what the, what the uh, you know, use would be. Uh, but then I was uh, stepped down from the committee when I joined this committee. Um, <laughs> But I wanted to just mention that when I saw this on the, on the agenda, I was really excited uh, because this has been, like I said, very rewarding work. I have a ton of respect for Rabbi Jacob Fine at Abundance Farm. They're doing incredible work. That $10,000, I'm sure, will be well used. Uh, I was thrilled with Grow Food Northampton. Again, the outreach is amazing. And the Survival Center, in the words of our former Mary Claire Higgins, she says, you know, the Survival Center, they're walking the last mile to serving people in real need. And uh, I think that that really resonated with me and meant a lot the way she put it. Um, I was disheartened when I saw the Salvation Army. I really had a hard time. Um, they have a checkered past with the LGBTQT uh, community. And I was really, when I saw Tuesday night, I saw it pretty late, couldn't really sleep right away. And so the last 36 hours, I've, I've reached out to a few people that I know and asked them what they think. Just tell me what you think about this. And um, you know, one friend, uh, said, well, we give to the Salvation Army because we believe in their work. She said, we give four big lesbian thumbs up to the Salvation Army. Um, and another friend that I spoke at length today, um, and he said, you know, it's amazing how much good they do. And I think since it's a trust fund that the city manages, I'm okay with it. And I think you should feel really good about it. 
However, if it was my tax dollars, I might feel differently. So I thought about that some, and uh, I'm, you know, I'm thrilled to support this, all of it, every bit of it. But, but I just wanted to, to voice that because, again, it was something that really occurred to me um, as part of our welcoming community, who we are. Um, it, it needed to be addressed, I felt. So thank you. Thank you for thank your you. thoughtfulness and your work on the thank committee. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any other comments? Councilor Derek? Um, I just wanted to say I've heard from several Meadowbrook residents uh, about the Thursday neighborhood market that Grow Food Northampton does and how, how much they appreciate that. So I'm glad we're supporting that. Anyone else? Okay. So all those in favor of positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 <laughs> aye. Any objections? No abstentions. Okay, so uh, moving on, 20.019, in order to reprogram $7,500 from CS Energy Management System to Senior Center Energy Control Upgrades. Ordered that $7,500 of surplus funds remaining in the CS Fire Energy Management Systems project um, be reprogrammed for a new project to make energy control upgrades to the Senior Center. Okay, approve. Motion. And second. Seconded. Um, <laughs> Mr. Mayor. So, um, the, um, as it's described, there was a central services capital project uh, at the fire station, at the main fire station headquarters, um, and uh, it was to do some. at the senior center to make similar um, upgrades um, with some of the controls and switches of their um, HVAC, HVAC systems. So they're seeking to reprogram those remaining monies from that project to be allowed to be used uh, for similar work at the senior center. So that's essentially what it is. Okay, thank you. Any comments or discussion? No? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. No objections? No objections? Okay. Next up is 20.020 in order to authorize NPS, Northampton Public Schools, to enter MOU, Memo of Understanding, for Every Student Succeeds Act. Uh, order that, whereas the school department wishes to enter into an agreement with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Health of Human Health Executive Office of Health and Human Services, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, and Department of Children and Families to allow participation in the Title IV E claiming of transportation expenditures for children in foster care. Whereas the Every Student Succeeds Act, ESSA, promotes education stability by allowing a student the right to continue to attend the school in which they were enrolled at the time of their placement in foster care, unless it is determined not to be in the student's best interest. Therefore, pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 44, Mass General Law Section 70, the city, by the vote of its city council, authorizes the Northampton School Committee as the local education agency, with the approval of the mayor, to enter into a memorandum of understanding for the purposes of Title IV-E reimbursement. Motion's been made. Second. And seconded by Councillor Thorpe. Discussion. So this is actually a new program that um, that DESE has developed. That's Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, um, as it says in the order, working with uh, DCF um, and with the Executive Office of Health and Human Services. Um, you, councils, uh, some councilors may remember or, or be reminded of the McKinney Vento program, which we sometimes come to you for, uh, which is for homeless transportation. And so, if a child is um, homeless and is sheltered in one community, um, we provide transportation back to their home school so that they can remain in their home district and the McKinney Vento program pays that. Uh, this is a no, new program that's sort of a corollary to that for foster children. Um, so if a child, uh, you know, from Northampton 
um, was placed in foster care in another community, um, they would they have the right to be transported back to Northampton to continue their education in Northampton. So this would provide a funding stream um, for um, limited reimbursement to um, two districts to help pay for that transportation, very similar to the McKinney-Vento program. Uh, but one of the conditions of it is we have to enter into um, an MOU um, uh, with, with uh, EOHHS and, and DESE and the Department of Children and Families. And the way the regulations read is that uh, the local governing body, the city council and the mayor, have to authorize the local education authority, which <laughs> i.e. the Northampton Public Schools, to actually enter into that MOU. So you're basically voting uh, to allow NPS to enter into this MOU so they can participate in this uh, foster care reimbursement program. Just a, a question, would the school committee also have to uh um, we, as well. We've already discussed it, um, and we're aware of it, so I'm fairly certain we would also take a vote. I think we're timing it, so after this authorization, we'll authorize the superintendent to, um, to enter into it. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments on this important program we're thankful for? No? Okay, so all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Objections? Abstentions. Okay. And last is 20.021, in order to appropriate free cash to NPS, Northampton Public Schools, for E-Rate. Whereas the E-Rate program is the name for the Schools and Libraries Program of the Universal Service Fund, which is administered by the Universal Service Administrative Company under the direction of the Federal Communications Commission, FCC, the program provides discounts to assist schools in the U.S in the U.S. obtain affordable telecommunications and internet access, whereas the city has received uh, $51,834.60 for FY 2020 E-rate funds allocated to the Northampton Public Schools, and the mechanism to make these funds avail available to the schools immediately requires an appropriation from free cash. Ordered that $51,834.60 be appropriated from the FY 2020 General Fund Undesignated Fund Balance Free Cash to the Northampton Public Schools equivalent to the E-rate reimbursement received uh, by the city for the benefit of the school department to improve and expand technology connectivity. Is there a motion? Motion Councilor LaBarge. A second. Second. Seconded by Councilor Quinlan. Discussion. So E-rate is a is a, been a long-standing program, and it's the way that uh, most of um, uh, uh, schools, any schools, both um, at, at the um, secondary level and also our, our public schools, receive funding for uh, telecommunication service, actually internet service. Um, and so you you may or may not know it, but on all of our phone bills, there's a small fee that's collected, um, and that money is compiled. Um, and then it is actually um, distributed by a nonprofit uh, corp uh, designated by the FCC, this USAC, um, and it comes back to school. So that actually normally happens every year, um, and the schools get that money um, on sort of a formula basis. Um, this was a special grant program um, through this same um, USAC, um, and it was a, a grant uh, basically for a set amount of money um, to do some replacement of old technology equipment in classrooms uh, that, had, that needed replacement, um, to provide teachers with newer AV and interactive technology um, and to replace networking equipment um, that had not been able to be replaced uh, within their current budget. So normally the monies go straight to the schools. Under this program, they actually flowed to the city um, as, a, as sort of an undesignated revenue. Um, so much like the McKinney-Vento monies that also does that, um, in order for us to get the money to the schools, we basically have to appropriate it out of our undesignated fund balance back to the schools. So we're basically, you know, we're sort of the bridge between that grant and then the money actually getting to the schools. So the money was received by the city um, because it wasn't a a budgeted revenue with the city. It's part of our undesignated funds, and so we're basically asking you to appropriate it from undesignated funds directly to the schools. Okay. Yeah. So it's not city money. We're basically acting as the pass-through uh, for this grant program for the schools, much like we do with the McKinney-Vento and, and similar grant programs. Okay. <laughs> Any questions or discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay.
Um, I don't have any new business. Is there a motion to adjourn finance? Motion to adjourn. Motion's been made. Second. And seconded. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Okay, we are adjourned and magically back here. Um, where we're going to go through these financial orders. So, first one is 20.018 order to appropriate $25,000 in Wedding Street Trust Funds. Will you approve it, please? Motion's been made. Second. And seconded by Councillor Jarrett. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. And Councillor Lavard. Yes. That passes. Uh, next is 20.019 in order to reprogram $7,500 from CS Energy Management System to Senior Center Energy Control Upgrades. Move to approve. Motion's been made. Second. Inseconded by Councillor Thorpe. You need my button. Maybe the buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion on this financial order? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labard. Yes. Councillor Mayor. Yes. That passes in first reading. Next is 20.020 in order to authorize Northampton Public Schools to enter a memorandum of understanding for every student succeeds act. Second. Motion's been made and Second. seconded by Councillor Labarge. Any discussion? Councillor Foster. Yeah, I'm, I'm still forming my thoughts, and I didn't expect it would be a financial order to hit me as strongly as it did. Um, but I just think that this is amazing. Several years ago, my family served as a temporary foster care placement for a fourth grader. And one of the reasons we did is that we had the ability to transport her to her home school every day. And I saw firsthand uh, for about six weeks how difficult it was for her to be in a temporary placement. Um, but being able to be at her home school and have that stability every day um, was one piece of the puzzle um, that helped her through that really difficult time. And to see this, it sort of just always brings it back that this is real people's lives um, that this work touches. And um, I'm glad to see this on the agenda and um, you know, glad that, glad that this is moving forward. Thank you. Any other comments on this? <coughs> OK. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labar. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. 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 That passes in first reading. Uh, next up is 20.021 in order to appropriate free cash to Northampton Public Schools for E rate. Move to approve. Motion's been made. Second. And seconded by Councillor Thorpe. Any discussion on this order? Seeing none, roll call please. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Thorpe. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Foster. Yes. Councilor Jarrett. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Maori. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Yes. That also passes in first reading. Uh, we're now moving on to financial orders that are on their second reading. Um, we have uh, the four that were the CPA fund um, appropriations so that can move them as a group I thought you might um, so uh, <laughs> so let me read their titles first and then we'll see about that I'm um, in order to appropriate CBA funds for historic preservation of <coughs> and Shepherd barn 20.009 in order to appropriate CPA funds for affordable home on Glendale Road 20.010 in order to appropriate CBA funds to community builders for North Commons project and 20.011 in order to appropriate CPA funds to NHA for Hampshire Heights Playground. There has been a motion to move them as a group. Was there a second? second. It's been seconded. Uh, any discussion on moving them as a group? 
All those in favor of moving them as a group, please say aye. 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 Um, and now I need to move. I'll, I'll move, move them as a group. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Second. Maybe that was <laughs> okay. Here we are again. Um, no. Councillor Quinlan on that one. Um, okay. So the motion. We're going to move these as a group. That's clear. Um, is there any discussion on this group? Roll call, please. Councillor Thor. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Giard. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Miori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. And Councillor Sherrod. Yes. Uh, next is twenty point. I know I'm gonna have it in my list. Uh, twenty point um, zero one two. In order to set date and time of the 2020-2021 City Council meeting. This is a second reading. The first reading passed on, um, was on January 7th. It was inadvertently left off our last um, agenda, yet we all came here today, so. <laughs> That's a good sign so far, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're gonna take, um, I'm gonna look for a motion for us to take a second vote on our so moved. Second it. It's been made and seconded. Any discussion on the second reading of the 2020-21 City Council meeting calendar? As a point of clarif uh, clarification from last uh, last time, I think I think I would bring this up actually after at the new either new business or uh, study requests about looking into changing the meeting time. Would that be the appropriate time to? So maybe we pass it and then we reflect on it later with a, is that? Um, yes, so committee study requests come from the council president. Oh, okay. Um, I just saw it on the agenda, right? Yes, it yes. always is there. Okay. It's sort of held there. Yeah. Um, but we could certainly talk about that. Yeah, I just didn't, right. So we talk about it during that time in the agenda. If it were on the agenda. If it were on the agenda. On oh, I see. Yeah. It's not, I see, okay. Okay. Yes, I understand. Get it on the agenda. Right. Gotcha. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. Uh, we can talk about me putting it on the agenda. Yes, that's because the, a committee study request comes from the council president. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Um, we have a motion on this, yes? Yes. Okay. Several. Any other discussion on our calendar? Nope. Um, roll call, please. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Foster. Yes. Councilor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labar. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thor. Yes. Okay. That passes in second reading. We will come. Council. Oh, I just while we were clarifying, so is new business also a council president? No. Uh, okay. Um. Okay. Ordinances not yet referred. Uh, 20.014, an ordinance relative to parking on Bridge Street. Um, this was on the January 21st Transportation Parking Commission <coughs> agenda, um, but it now needs to be referred to, at the very least, legislative matter. Can, can, um, I'd like to move actually 20.014 uh, and 20.015. Point zero I'm going to reject that, and you'll see why in a minute. Bam. Okay. <laughs> so I'll, 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 I'll uh, move twenty zero point one four. Yeah. So did, did it just get chilly in here? Bam. Stop. Okay. So I'm moving. Throw the parking on Bridge Street, please. To I'd like to refer to legislative matters. Second. There. Second. I'll second that. Okay. okay. Any discussion on that referral? Yes. Uh, just to say that we will have it on the calendar of legislative matters, although it is possible we might not have enough time to get to it. We might have to um, save it for the following meeting. Okay. Just the, yeah. that caveat. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Councilor Jarrett? Um, so when does, has this already been through transportation? Yes, parking? it was there on January 21st. Okay. Yeah, and I would say it's fine if you want to save it for the next meeting because the next item we're going to talk about will hopefully catch up. Now you're giving it away. I'm giving it away. <laughs> and and, um, Just and I will say that 
that that with with both of these, there's been a ton of outreach that went in to uh, talking to the businesses uh, along uh, Bridge Street and flyering cars and all sorts of stuff. So, so it, to say that going to legislative matters is appropriate. All those in favor of the referral <laughs> to legislative matters say uh, aye. Aye. Objections. Sentence. Okay. It has been referred. Next is 20.015, an order relative to metered parking on Pleasant Street. I, now, I'm, I'm hesitant to move this to refer <laughs> yeah. to what's... Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on a sec. Sorry. Hold on a sec. Okay. Yeah, it's been requested by the DPW that... <laughs> <laughs> that we don't move it to legislative matters, that we refer it back to transportation parking commission. Okay. I, 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 I move... Uh, that we refer this back to transportation and parking, aka TPC. Is there a second? Second. 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 Any discussion? Um, why? <laughs> Councilor Nash, do you? Yeah. Want so to um, my way in? there was a lot of outreach, and then um, <laughs> and then, uh, but there was a lot of concern about uh, the uh, uh, parking, uh, the way people exited a parking lot at the southern end of this parking zone. And that the DPW went out and looked at it and said, hey, wait a minute, we really need to look at this further. So they're, they're going to propose some slight changes to this. Um, so that's, and it makes sense that it would go back to the TPC before moving forward. Any other, yes, Councilor? Um, I know this sits in here twice. And listed here twice as is one a previous version of the other, and do we determine how is that determined? It's my mistake. Okay. Sorry about that. We hope to have a diagram. There is a diagram. Any further discussion on the referral? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Objections. Okay, that has been referred back to Transportation Parking Commission. And then we have 19.137, an ordinance to amend Chapter 312, Vehicles and Traffic. Um, now, this has a long history, um, and it passed in first reading on uh, December 19th, 2019, so that was with the previous council. We have a rule of automatic carryover to the next session, so it is here. Um, and But since we have new members, I'm going to read it, which is not necessarily our um, practice usually for second reading, but I think it's appropriate. So. Upon recommendation of the mayor, 19.137, an ordinance to amend chapter 312, vehicles and traffic, an ordinance regarding vehicles and traffic, uh, ordinance and ordinance of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts, provided that the code of ordinances, city of Northampton, Massachusetts, be amended by amending section 312-117, providing for on-street and off-street handicapped parking spaces. Be it ordained by the City Council of City of Northampton, city, in City Council assembled as follows, amend 312.117, schedule uh, 16, off on-street and off-street handicapped parking spaces. Delete as follows, Pleasant Street off Gleason Plaza, uh, first parking space on the westerly most side of the most northerly end of the parking lot east of the first entrance off of Gleason Plaza. Um, See, it's perfect. <laughs> we had asked for a map of this. Did we get one? No, no not okay. at this one. Yep. Well, the good news is that this was at TPC and at Legislative Matters, so maybe... Councilor Nash is very well versed in this. He's, um... It was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> <laughs> I think he actually has a tattoo on his back, <laughs> if you want to see it. Yeah, the, I, the, the, so the short story is that the management of the depot lot has changed. That uh, the city has an arrangement uh, with that lot that we lease a portion of it, um, and that um, the new arrangement has uh, the private owner of the property actually managing the lot for all 24 hours. So the need for us to have uh, ordinances regulating a portion of that lot, because we used to have meters in there, is no longer needed. 
and that um, that what we're striking here is actually the language we've already in um, in the last uh, term we we also struck other language related to the depot lot, and we're not eliminating a handicapped parking space. That the the depot lot under its current private management has uh, several. I, I I went through it there back in the fall and counted, and I think there's like eight, seven or eight ha designated handicap, handicap parking spaces there now. Many of them up by the platform mm -hmm. uh, for access to the train. So what we're doing is we're taking out that last, one of those last vestiges of the language that had to do with the city having um, our management of the depot lot. There are handicap spaces there. Excellent. Is there a motion on this before we have any discussion? Uh, I move approval. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any further discussion on this? Seeing none, roll call please. Councilor Foster? Yes. Councilor Jarrett? Yes. <laughs> Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Mayori? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Quinlan? Yes. Councilor Shara? Yes. Councilor Thora? Yes. And yes. Okay, that passes in second reading. Um, there are no information requests or committee study requests that are on this agenda. I don't have any new business. Um, move to adjourn. Second. Motion made and second adjourn. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. We are adjourned. Or you sitting.